If you're looking to boost your Mutt team or make some money by selling coins, check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 16 video. And guys, today what we're going to be talking about is the Madden Championship Finals that happened earlier this week. Uh, basically guys, there was a big tournament uh, at the E3 event and we saw a ton of really great players come together and play competitive Madden. And for me, this is something that I've been really looking forward to. I'm a big fan of just competitive gaming in general. I think that it's an industry that is just growing exponentially. I'm so happy to see Madden finally getting involved in it. I'm so happy to see EA finally putting some funding behind it. I believe this is the first tournament that we've seen since Madden 25. No, excuse me. I, I'm sorry. Serious Mo won the one earlier this year. I, I apologize. But... Definitely, I don't think we saw anything in Madden 15 regarding tournaments, if I remember correctly. So, uh, it's definitely cool to see that they're actually putting some money into, you know, making Madden a competitive game. So, it's very, very cool. I'm excited about that. And today, guys, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the things that I liked about it. So, kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly of this whole tournament. So, uh, I think each of these things, uh, there were definitely things that fit into each of those categories. A lot of good. I'm not going to sit and smack talk this event, but uh, at the end of this video, we are going to have a little bit of video clips. Unfortunately, I don't have access to the the whole video. I can't really upload that because it's EA's you know copyright because it was their event and they uploaded it on their Twitch channel and things like that. But I got just a couple of small clips that I wanted to include here in today's video so that you guys can get kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. But Guys, I think the, the big thing for me in this whole event, uh, again, the good, let's start off with that because, uh, again, I think that that's the, the major thing here. There was a hell of a lot of good that came out of this. Uh, you saw on the first screen, the presentation was really, really cool. Um, now, on your screen, you see the commentators. So, <laughs> I actually really like the commentators, personally. I know other people have differing opinions on it. I know my buddy Chase is not a big fan of the man on your left there. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, you know, I, I think the, the guy on the right Gibbs, everybody pretty much knows him. Uh, but unfortunately not everybody knows Scott Cole. And for those who do, it's kind of one of those things where he, we've seen him on stream, just get a ridiculous amount of stuff from EA and just, you know, like he, he just has all of the really cool stuff before anybody else. I think that he had the 99 Marshawn Lynch before anybody else did this year. Like before you could even get it in the game, he had it. And, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where not everybody appreciates that so much. But I will say this. I really liked the way that these guys kind of bounced off of one another in the commentary. And, and also we saw Z Farls uh, and we saw RG as well. I'm trying to remember if there were other commentators. But those were the four that I remember at least from this whole tournament. And, and I personally think they did a great job of, of kind of combining these guys. I know Farls and Gibbs are usually together. You see them a lot of times together. But, uh, you know, I like that they kind of broke them up actually in it made each of them really, you know, do their thing, but do it with somebody else. And I think both of them did a great job. Scott Cole kind of has that natural announcer voice. And it was kind of interesting because as we were watching this gameplay, uh, we really got to see kind of that Gibbs in this case was kind of breaking down the, the inner workings of Madden and what might be going through these guys' minds because he's somebody that's played competitive Madden uh, and he plays Madden at a fairly high level still at this point. But uh, Gibbs is kind of, or no, excuse me, um, Scott Cole is kind of more of like your traditional commentator, like I said. And he, like I said, again, he also really had that really good commentator voice. So I liked that a lot. Uh, again, I really think they did a great job on the presentation of this whole thing. Uh, another cool thing that they had regarding presentation was the interviews. And I know this is nothing new to esports, but for Madden, it like it, it felt really authentic here. I think they did a great job with Farouk coming in there, and you know he did such a great job of interviewing. He's got experience doing interviews and other things, of course. And it wasn't awkward. It wasn't forced. Uh, I think he did a great job of asking questions that were you know fairly 
interesting at least. Of course, you know, they always do the old, how do you think it's going to go? Who do you want to play against, you know, throughout the tournament? And, and everybody says, you know, I, I hope that I win. I just hope it's going to be a good game. And then who do you want to play? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Everybody says that crap, right? So maybe in the future, don't ask those questions or maybe, uh, you know, lead them in a little bit more and, and say, you know, so-and-so has a really great running attack and we've noticed that you have a great run defense. So, you know, maybe are you looking forward to potentially a matchup between your run defense against his running game to kind of test things out? You know, get him to talk about the other people a little bit, not necessarily even talking smack, but, you know, getting them to just do a little bit more of a, a selling job, I guess. And that's something that came from my experience doing interviews when I did a lot of MMA interviews. I would interview UFC, UFC fighters and I would ask them kind of leading questions like that. You know, you would never really ask them specifically, do you think you're going to win this fight? Because of course they're thinking that they're going to win the fight. Otherwise they wouldn't be in the damn fight. But, you know, they they really have to be pushed sometimes. Some guys are just naturally charismatic and you can ask them the most general question, like a Conor McGregor or somebody like that. And they're just going to come out there and lay just amazing line after amazing line. But other guys, you kind of have to drive into their psyche just a little bit more and just kind of push it out of them because it might be deep down inside of them that they're going to give you something interesting. But maybe... You know, you just need to, to do a better job of getting that out of them. But I think, again, Farouk did a great job. I, I'm sure he wasn't the one that was, you know, giving them the questions. I mean, he was just kind of the guy to, to actually deliver the question. He wasn't really the one writing the questions, I'm sure. But um, in the future, I'd like to see that a little bit more, you know, some more interesting type of questions to get a little bit more out of them. But I really like the professionalism that he brought to the interviews. Um, not to say anything negative about any of the other guys that they've had in the past or anything, but I just really like that they brought that professional feel to this whole presentation. I really think they did a great job on all of that type of stuff. Um, some other cool things that they had in this tournament, the championship belt. Uh, <laughs> as a pro wrestling fan, as an MMA fan, championship belts are the shit, son. I mean, that thing looks awesome. That is a customized belt. I mean, it looks authentic. It's got some weight to it. You can tell. That's something that he's going to be able to, the, the winner is going to be able to hang on their mantle and, you know, really, really be proud of over the course of their life. So, uh, yeah, I, again, I really thought that that was cool. They did a great job. And, um, you know, it's definitely something that I was I was really excited to see. So uh, from now on, at this point, I want to talk a little bit more about some things that maybe I didn't like so much. Um, you know, the we talked about the good. The presentation was amazing. EA's gotten involved in the in the competitive Madden scene. And uh, it was really cool to see the top guys in the world playing against one another. Some bad things about this. I didn't realize this, but apparently... You can't be under 18 and compete in these tournaments. Now, I'm not trying to necessarily say that somebody that's under the age of 18 is good enough to compete in these tournaments, but if they are, we've got to give them the opportunity. Now, again, I understand that there are some technical things that go into that, you know, maybe some situations with school or maybe some situations with prize money and taxes and things like that. The bottom line is other esports do this, okay? Look, the Halo tournament that happened recently... $2 million were on the line. Might have even been a lot more than that by the end. I'm trying to remember exactly. But I believe that there were like 15 and 16-year-olds competing in that. Definitely people under the age of 18. I know Hook, who was previously in the Call of Duty World League in, uh, it, or I guess it wasn't called the Call of Duty World League, but, you know, the Call of Duty League in um, Advanced Warfare. He was too young to compete this year because they changed the rules that you had to be 18 in Call of Duty. So he went over to Halo and started competing for $2 million. Now, I don't really remember how far he went in that tournament or even if he placed but I feel like he did pretty well. I know Hook's a beast player on that on that Halo game. So it's happening in other esports. You do not have to be under or above 18. You can be under 18 and still get money from esports. So I'm not really for certain what EA is trying to do there. You know, maybe it's a situation where they just need to get permission slips from parents or something like that. The bottom line is I want to see the best against the best, right? So I guess, uh, again, I think that's a little bit of a negative. The other thing that I didn't like about this that I'm going to consider to be the bad is basically, guys, when it comes down to it, when we're watching this whole tournament, I mean, we're getting the best players, of course, and, and that's all good, but unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of excitement around it. And when I say that, I mean like Twitch viewers and YouTube viewers combined for maybe at the most 
4,000 viewers at once, concurrent viewers. Now, 4,000 viewers for a Madden stream would be amazing, right? Like if myself or even somebody who is a big channel like a Toke or a Cullenberger or if uh, if Anto the Boss was streaming or something like that, it's unlikely that any of us are going to get to 4,000 concurrent viewers. I get that. But we don't have the, the money behind us that EA does. We don't have the ability to put a graphic up in the loading screen of your games that say, hey, hop on and watch us play live right now. You know, it's it's one of those things where I, I, I'm not exactly sure what the solution is here, but we've got to do something to get more viewers watching these tournaments because – if you're going to put these tournaments on and only 3,000 people are going to watch them, it's going to be difficult for EA to justify doing more of them. Now, fortunately, they have already committed to a, a, a million dollars in prize pool for a uh, guaranteed at least. Could be more than that uh, for Madden 17, so that's awesome. But in the future, over the next course of the, ye uh, of the next year, we've got to do something to get more eyes on these games. And it could just be that the prize pool being bigger is going to draw more attention. You know, maybe we get some more of that ESPN attention or things like that. But I think 4,000 viewers is a little bit disappointing. And, and I say that because the previous tournament, uh, I remember that, I believe it was, yeah, it was T-Raw, was telling me that in one of the games that he played, and I believe it was uh, from the Madden Champ, the Madden Challenge, excuse me, earlier this year, the one that Sirius Mo won, I believe T-Raw said that at one point when he was playing, and he wasn't in the finals, uh, but at one point when he was playing, there were over 10,000 people watching. So maybe it's just this point in the Madden season that people just aren't as excited about it. That could very well be. I'm not exactly for certain on that. But the bottom line is that we need to do something to get more eyes on this game and more eyes on the competitive game specifically so that we can, you know, get more money in it. And maybe something that we could consider doing, and I brought this up before in streams and things like that, I feel like what we have to do is start to take advantage of the YouTubers. And I'm not talking even about myself. I'm talking about people with huge channels. I'm talking about the guys that I named before and, uh, you know, your cookie boys and, uh, you know, guys like that that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube and even the Twitch streamers. We need to get those guys advertising this. Spend some money, EA. Make, you know, buy some advertising time on their channels and hopefully we'll get people actually watching, you know, have three or four of them upload videos the day of the tournaments or, you know, one of them each day upload a video right before the tournaments go live that basically say, hey, come on over here, join me. We're going to be watching the stream over on the EA Sports Twitch channel. Join me in the chat. Let's talk and let's watch some competitive Madden, something like that. But you're going to get thousands and thousands of people instantly on that. And people are going to come over and watch. Like, it happens all the time. I'm telling you guys, I've done this myself with my own Twitch channel. It's a great way to advertise. You do a YouTube video, and you get people from the YouTube channel over to the Twitch channel. Now, of course, not everyone's going to come, but still, it's a good marketing thing to do. And I really think it's something that EA needs to consider doing. Because I'm telling you right now, if they had Toke put out a video, if they had Cullenberger put out a video, if they had TD Presents put out a video, Cookie Boy, Anto, all these guys that have the huge... Madden channels, and I'm sorry if I'm leaving anybody out. No disrespect meant to, to anybody, of course. Uh, I'm pretty cool with everybody in the Madden community as far as YouTubers, as far as I know. Um, but if you put those guys to work and let them advertise on their channel, pay them a couple thousand dollars to put a, an ad on their channel, a dedicated ad, we're talking about a lot more eyes on your product, and I think that that's a good thing in the long term for everybody. So sorry I went on a little bit of a rant there, but that's kind of my bad. Now let's talk about the ugly. And this is where we're actually going to start to see some gameplay footage, guys. So on your screen, you're starting to see Problem Right. Now this is from uh, directly taken from the stream. And you're going to see Problem Right run his most effective play, the fullback dive. Now Problem ran this play about 400 times during this tournament. No, not literally. But, I mean, he sat and ran this play over and over and over and over and with Rob Gronkowski golden ticket it was just so ridiculously OP um 
you know, the opposing defenses just were not able to stop it. Now, I will say Stiff did the best job of any of the guys in stopping this play, but it was just everybody was getting just smashed by this thing for four, five, eight yards a pop, and he was never getting stopped for negative yardage. Now, of course, there are ways to stop the fullback dive, but you're looking at something that I would consider to be a glitch in the game, and it's not really a glitch because it's not something that is uh, unintended. I guess so. I guess it's not actually a glitch. I shouldn't say that, but it's it's something that I think the developers obviously realized was a big problem while they were watching this. And this is the fullback dive out of the Seattle playbook, and it has to do with the speed in which the handoff comes in. Rob Gronkowski gets that ball so so quick; it's faster than I believe every other handoff in the game. And that's what makes it so effective, especially when you've got a golden ticket there taking the ball. And you're seeing it over and over and over again here. Uh, and, and I'm sorry that we have to put it on repeat, but that's just something that we kind of have to do. Um, and again, guys, he did this so many times throughout the games, and it was very, very effective. Uh, but that was just one gameplay falter that I saw during while I was uh, you know, watching the gameplay footage. And uh, the other one that I wanted to talk about had to do with this. Now, this is basically something that happens all the time in Madden. Fourth and nine at his own 32-yard line, up 14 in the game, and what is Stiff doing? He is going to take the ball and he is going to chuck it down the middle of the field into double coverage. And guess what? It's a catch. It's an aggressive catch. Of course it is, right? Because aggressive catching is something that you can easily stop in this game, according to the EA developers. You just, all you have to do is play man, right? I mean, yeah, I'm sure that the best players in the world don't know that though, right? No, the problem is that aggressive catching from the beginning of this year has been just ridiculously broken, and it hasn't gotten any better. Even with the golden ticket cornerbacks and safeties, they just still can't compete, and it's really frustrating to even watch because you just know that on pro the look on Problem's face is just, it says it all, man. There's just not much you can do about it. It's fourth and nine. You've done everything you can on defense, and your opponent just throws it up into double coverage, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, so frustrating, and in a game where you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars on the line, it's just something that is, it's frustrating to watch, and, uh, you know, I think everybody this year, for the most part, has had a problem with stopping aggressive catching from time to time, and you're seeing that even the guys that are at the top level, the best players in the world, also have a huge problem stopping this, and so, uh, again, it's something that needs to be fixed, and that's why I consider it part of the ugly of this tournament. Um, it, it, this tournament did a lot to expose uh, competitive Madden and get that into people's eyes, but it also did a great job of exposing how bad Madden 16 is, right? At least the gameplay-wise. So, uh, yeah, anyways, the, the last thing that I want to talk about gameplay-wise is uh, this blitz here. Now, this is something that came through multiple times in a row. You're actually not watching a replay. Well, there will be a replay, but this is back-to-back -back plays with problem with under two minutes left and a, an a gap blitz is coming through completely undefended now look i understand what happens in this game i understand that you can slide protect and things like that but look we're talking about the best players in the world getting hit on back-to-back -back plays where their mid the interior of their offensive line literally did nothing they all stood there and let that guy run through this is a problem. I don't care where you're coming from. I understand, again, that you can slide protect. You can block a running back. You can do all these different things. But at the end of the day, your offensive linemen should not be completely overwhelmed by four guys rushing the quarterback when there's five offensive linemen, especially an interior pass rush. If it's an edge blitz or something like that where maybe the center just can't kick out there in time to get there when they've got three guys coming off an edge or something like that, I get it. That can happen. And even some of this looping stuff can happen in real life. I get it. But, I mean, this is back-to-back -back plays where a defensive tackle runs right up the middle, right past the guard in the center, and just smashes the quarterback in the backfield, and there's nothing he can do about it. I mean, that's insanity right there. I know the players themselves are not going to complain about this because they're too proud, but this is a problem in my opinion. And not to use uh, the you know the name problem, but you know <laughs> uh, it happened a problem, and I believe that it is a major problem. So uh, again, guys, that's kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good again being presentation, the fact that they're getting involved. The bad, 
you know, under 18 people not allowed to play. That kind of sucks. It's not the best thing in the world. And the viewership wasn't great for this tournament. And the ugly, the gameplay, in my opinion. Uh, and again, I want to point out, I don't blame any of the players in this tournament for doing what they did. Uh, everybody that played in this tournament was doing what it took to win. And that's what competitive gaming is, okay? Again, I do not blame the players for exploiting the problems with this game. That's kind of what it takes to be a competitive gamer. And, you know, unfortunately, that's just the way that things are. We can't really do much about it other than beg EA and, you know, push them as much as we can to improve their game. That's what I want to see in Madden 17. I want to see less of these things that are just so blatantly, obviously shit. It shouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm not a game developer, so I can't say that, you know, uh, I would be able to fix it or anything. But this stuff has been a problem for a long, long time. Uh, the blitzes where your offensive linemen just have no idea what the hell is going on. And again, I get it. You can shift your line. You can block a running back. You can do this and that. The end of the day, the offensive linemen, I mean, it doesn't matter what their awareness is. You could have a 99 overall offensive lineman in there, or you could have a zero overall offensive lineman. And on plays like that, they're going to react literally exactly the same. I believe that's an issue, and I believe it's something that we have to fix in the community. We have to force EA to fix it next year. So anyway, guys, that is my opinion on the whole thing. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I want to do a quick shout out to the champion, Stiff, from Madden Daily. Madden Daily, uh, represented by two different guys in the final four. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and possibly could have been the final two guys if they didn't have to play against one another in the uh, the semifinals. So, uh, lights out and stiff. Congratulations to both of you for finishing in the top four. I'm wild. Congratulations to you for finishing in the top four. And, of course, the greatest of all time, Problem. Congratulations for finishing second. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Very fun to watch. I enjoyed Enjoyed it, even though I got banned in the Twitch chat for, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. But uh, <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong, damn it. No, I'm, I'm just joking. But uh, anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will talk to you guys again soon.